we're talking about 8,000 direct jobs over a three year period or it were something, you know, 20, 30,000 jobs and that would be catastrophic um, in the region's concern. But 20 to 30,000 jobs would be normally two months worth of normal employment growth. So it's bad for the people that are local. It's, it's not going to cause a Victorian recession. It's not going to cause an Australian recession. We don't really know which jobs are going to be created where, but um, and generally you'll expect to see them in the service sectors, if it's infrastructure spending, then in, in construction, etc. In terms of the car industry, no, but have we seen one-off hits? Um, for example, when ANSEP closed, there were 16,000 jobs lost in one go. So that's sort of the biggest in Australia, and we know that 75% of those people got a job within a year. Now, the, the tricky bit is that they didn't get jobs that were probably as well paid, and that most of them got jobs in the aviation industry, which you're not going to be able to do this time. But, but we have seen shocks like this before, yes. I think generally, we expect unemployment to continue to grow to about six and a half percent. So we're, we're sort of saying that, look, the labour market is showing some signs of improvement, but it's more that it's becoming less negative. So we would expect to see unemployment continue to, to track up to about six and a half by the end of the year uh, and then start to come back down. So in the short term, I think it's still going to be a lot of noise out there about job losses and rising levels of unemployment. The other issue is that if unemployment continues to go up as we expect, uh, then I think you're probably going to get another rate cut towards the end of the year.